try to encapsulate this. Uh, that piece of artwork there is done by a local Philadelphia artist with a national and international reputation. Matt yeah. King does a very simple version of it, but the technical version is catching three goldfish you know, out of the air, one after the other. Uh, this bowl was uh, Leslie Guess, who was a, a Chautauqua performer, also uh, editor of MUM for many, many years. I'm gonna lead you down the row here. And Library, this is close up, close up, Cards, cards, you mentalism. Amongst them, you'll find cases with cups and balls. So these are various versions of chop cups uh, made by uh, Five of Hearts, which is uh, Colin Rose from England. Down here, there's a set of Connie Hayden cups and balls, probably the rarest actual set of cups and balls I have. There were very few, because it made in sterling silver. There's 10 cups up here made by a guy up in Intercourse, Pennsylvania. Yes, that is a real town, Intercourse, Pennsylvania. Uh, these are the Indian cups and balls made by Tiad and uh, the European set that he made. These are Eric Hansen cups. Uh, these are Danny Dew silvers, Danny Dew coppers. Those were uh, P&L cups that were gold plated that were owned by Louis Ganson, the English author and magician. So these are the, uh, the Paul Fox chick cups made by Danny Dew. Uh, these are Michael Kaminska's cups. These are uh, Charlie Miller cups that are nickel plated. These are the Ross Bertram cups. Uh, I have a lot. A lot of cups. No, oh, there's more. There's more in the other room. These are the good ones. And these are cabinets held a lot of little props. As you can see, I like magic tables. There's a whole lot of magic tables here. Uh, this top, this uh, hat was Larry Jennings. Reason I have the Larry Jennings hat is because of this. This goes into the hat. This is a hamster loader. What? Yep. Yep. So a hamster goes in here. This was made by Joe Porper. This is the only one that was ever it's made. It's the only way to get wow. them not to leave. So, so there's a hamster in here and it's sitting on your lap. And he does a routine where he spins a, a, a silver dollar on a table and covers it with a hat. So guess heads or tails, heads or tails. You do it a couple times. And the last time he lifts it and there's a hamster. Through the hat, he would, this would be hold, held in the hat. He would squeeze this. The trap door's open and just, the hamster just goes boop, right onto the table. Wow. Not far to fall. Pretty simple. Sounds familiar. Okay. So Caps was a Dutch yeah. magician, the only magician to ever win the Grand Prix de Magie, highest honor of magic competition in the world, three times. Wow. Yeah. So the finish of his last Grand Prix act, he had a running gag where lit candles kept appearing. And at the end, he would light all five candles on the Clint candelabra. You could take it, throw it in the air, and it turned to an evening scarf, which he put on, uh, produced a cane and a top hat, and walked off stage. That was the end. Fortunately, there is video of this still existing. You can find it on YouTube. Uh, but this is the prop. It's the only one that was ever made. It was made as a gift for him by a, a French mechanic named Jean Ducatillon. These were Caps' Chinese sticks that he used. Uh, he used to perform this on the Ed Sullivan show. These are the sticks that he used on the Sullivan show. His pattern. his pattern is great, and you can find it. You can find the routine online. And, and in actuality, I do I do the trick in my shows a lot, and I basically use Caps's pattern, except for some of the politically incorrect lines <laughs> that really needed to be taken out for today's audience. It's just not not culturally uh, safe. <laughs> <laughs> You can only imagine, but if you go online, you can find this because again, he performed the sticks on the Sullivan show. Uh, so as we go through here, you'll see a lot of this stuff over here is the stuff from Thailand Magic Wagon. There's a couple of tables here made out of linking rings. So one, one of a kind set made by made by the original Rings and Things Company, and they made them for a guy named uh, Jay Malbro. Stuff, there's a uh, an Okito Nielsen uh, checker cabinet here. This is a Warlock Peter Warlock. Uh, Glass penetration, one of my favorite things. I just got a new version that's sitting on my bar that's this big, again, made by Magic Wagon. But then there's a giant one over there called Liquid Glass, which is the version that Jim Steinmeier created. And the one I have is Harry Blackstone's. Uh, this is all stage stuff over here, some foreign language stuff on the bottom. This is all history books over here. This, this, and this shelf are all lecture notes. I am up over 4,700 sets of lecture notes. I went to FISM. <laughs> oh, okay. How far did I go? I went to Dresden, Germany. That's how oh, far okay. I went. I've won stage nationals twice, SAM. Uh, I've done, I've been in the gold medal show three times on stage with IBM. I've got three silver medals from SAM. So yeah, I used to be reasonably serious about competition. Now I just, you know, coach and train.
So uh, this is a Morrison pill box. And what this is, in essence, it looks like a ball and base. You hold that, uh, so you would cover this up and you hold that, hands one on top, one on the bottom. Uh, so now you would take this and you would vanish it by your favorite method. <laughs> <laughs> and then you would take this back. You take this back. Oh, Show that's this. awesome. No, 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 but the cool part is this. Oh, oh what? what? My brain hurts. What? Yeah. What? So that's what a Morrison pillbox is. That's cool. This must be perfectly constructed as opposed to a ball and base. And so that's the whole thing. So these are all examples of Mars and pill boxes. So you have this whacking great monster made by a guy named Angelo Yafredi from uh, from uh, Rhode Island. And that's just a big ass uh, version of the same thing. Yeah, the oh, the yeah, normal yeah. version is generally referred to as Gwendolyn, yeah. the card picking duck. So that one is a one of a kind that was made by Onverdi. Onverdi was also one of the early pioneers of electronic magic. And that is an electronic version. So here's just a variety of different kinds of magic from mostly from that kind of era. Uh, this is a PL goldfish bowl where you produce three goldfish. Completely different method than what you saw over there. In this method, uh, the goldfish are in the lid of the bowl and get dropped out one by one. Um, this red table here, this was Ross Bertram's working table. So the bunny, this is this is a very interesting piece. This is a piece that was painted uh, by Disney artists, and this and this hung behind the magic shop in Disneyland many, many years ago. And I acquired this from a Disney collector. So um, this is the theater. So then as you put each row on, it sets up more, sets off more bells. Yeah. And at the end, when you put the last one on the square clock, those two on the end and the one on top appear magically. Oh. So yeah, it's pretty cool. The billiard white orange blossoms appear. Secondly, the oranges appear and the, and the, the one at the top uh, the last, you know, the last press opens up the one at the top. The two butterflies come up, holding the handkerchief between them, and the vanished ring is is tied to the handkerchief. If you see these automatons, I mean, they're not uncommon. You know, they're they've been made by various people at various periods of time. This is more than just an automaton, though. This is actually electronically controlled. To make this thing operate, you still have to wind it. That's actually how it still works. But uh, now it's wound up, he'll respond a little quicker. But here's something you don't see every day. <laughs> yeah, never ever really seen like. So he gets the spin here, and then he takes and he puts it on the deck, and turns over the card. Hmm. I said, "That's a pretty cool idea. Can I play with that?" He said, "Yeah, sure." So when I got home after that tour, like two days later. I had shapeshifter. I mean, literally the entire thing right here. And very excited, I called Oscar. I said, I think I got something on this. And I told him about it. He went, yeah, that's pretty good. That's, that's so good. I was at a convention and I started using it, you know, and I was at a convention uh, and my buddy Steve Bean was there and Steve loves color changes. Uh, so I said, Steve, I got a new color change for you. And he showed me, he does it. He went, holy shit, <laughs> do it again. And I did it again, he says, I gotta have that for the next issue of Trapdoor. <laughs>